the lightsaber, the iconic weapon of the Jedi and the Sith. Its blade was so immensely hot, it could cut through most materials with ease. As we discussed in a recent video over on my shorts channel, lightsaber blades burned with the heat of a star, or around 25,000 degrees Celsius. However, despite this, there were many materials that were completely, or at least partially, resistant to the blade of a lightsaber. In today's video, we will discuss every single material that was lightsaber resistant, drawing from both legends and canon. We'll roughly be going from the least effective to the most effective material, so make sure to watch to the end to find out the best defense against a Jedi or a Sith Lord. But before we begin, only about 10% of you have subscribed here on my second Star Wars channel. If you'd like to see more longer videos, make sure to like, comment, subscribe and watch until the end for the algorithm. Anyway, let us begin. First off, we have Armor Weave, the most flexible of all the materials discussed in this video. This cloth-like material dissipates energy across its surface, allowing it a degree of protection against blaster bolts and even lightsabers, although it wasn't particularly effective. Count Dooku and Vader both used it in their capes, while Mandalorians often made their armor out of this material. Although Armor Weave was rather limited in protecting against lightsaber strikes, its flexibility made it very useful. As was the case with Vader, the Armor Weave cloak simply added an additional layer of defense, while also giving the Dark Lord his signature dapper appearance. Another cloth-like lightsaber-resistant material was Norris Root. Norris Root was a rare and beautiful plant native to the planet of Amar. During the days of the Jedi Civil War, a highly sophisticated method of crushing up the root into red dye existed. This dye could then be applied to clothing, creating energy-resistant robes that could resist lightsaber blades and blaster bolts. Orbalisks were another biological lightsaber-resistant material. Orbalisks were essentially parasites that fed off the dark side of the Force. Once attached to the host, they would grow and multiply until eventually the host had been completely consumed. However, Freed and Nad discovered how to prevent the parasites from covering one's face, hands and feet, creating a biological suit of lightsaber resistant armor. However, although highly lightsaber resistant, it did have some drawbacks. Unsurprisingly, a suit of armor made of dark side parasites was very painful, meaning it could only be used by the greatest of all darksiders, such as Darth Bane. However, its use was even limited for the Sith as these creatures were not lightning resistant. In fact, Darth Bane was eventually forced to remove his Orbalisk armor, as he ended up killing much of it accidentally with his own Force Lightning. Another whole category of lightsaber resistant materials is those used by the Yuzong Bong. These genetically engineered biological monstrosities were designed for a whole range of different tasks, from defense to offense. The most notable example of this was the Vondong Crab armor. Similar to the Orbalisk armor, it would engulf the user entirely. This armor was almost completely resistant to both blaster fire and lightsabers. However, this did have its weaknesses. Because it was biological armor, it could suffer from biological issues. For example, the armor was allergic to some kinds of pollen. Like the Orbalisk armor, it was also highly vulnerable to force lightning, making this ability the Yuzong Vong's greatest weakness. The Yuzong Vong's main weapon was also highly resistant to lightsabers. The Amphistaff was a genetically engineered snake-like creature that doubled up as both a melee and ranged weapon. The sides of the Amphistaff were razor thin, measuring in the atoms, meaning it could cut through objects as easily as a lightsaber. Like Vondong Crab Armor, it was also completely impervious to lightsaber attacks. The only reason that it isn't further down the list is because of its major weakness. Like most Yuzong Vong biotech, it was susceptible to allergies, viruses, and electrical currents, which dramatically decreased its effectiveness. A lightsaber-resistant material from the Forced Unleashed games was Felucian's Skull Blades. Using the bones of an unknown creature native to their planet, the Felucians were able to create immensely strong blades that could resist the immense heat of a lightsaber. It is believed that the creature's bones contain many microcrystals with similar properties to kyber crystals. Once they were imbued with the force, it allowed for an extremely deadly and almost indestructible blade. Next up, we have Ultra Chrome, a lightsaber resistant material used by the Inquisitors in Legends as well as by the Sith during the Great Sith War. Ultra Chrome was a superconductor, meaning that energy from slugs, blasters, and lightsabers was instantaneously dispersed across its mass. This prevented the energy from concentrating in one place and cutting through. While this made it highly lightsaber resistant, it had one major drawback. 
if enough energy was pumped into the armor or shield, it would all simultaneously meld, leaving the wearer in a very precarious position at best or covered in molten sludge in a worst case scenario. This is likely why most opted to use this material in vibra shields rather than armor, allowing them to quickly discard it without injury if it became overheated. Frick was another lightsaber resistant material that probably saw the most use during the Skywalker saga era. Frick was mined on Gromas 16, producing an extremely light and durable metal after it had been processed. In fact, it was so strong, a Frick container survived the destruction of Alderaan. It is thought to have been invented during the Mandalorian Wars by a scientist named Gorman Van Drake. Van Drake was also known for his experiments on the weaponization of exocores. However, that's a story for another day, so make sure to hit the notification bell for that upcoming video. Frick was also known for dispersing electrical currents. This made it the near perfect material for use in the Magna Guard's electrostaffs and was also used in Palpatine's lightsaber. After the rise of the Empire, every Frick mine was nationalized and the material saw extensive use in the Legends version of the Dark Trooper project. The next lightsaber resistant material on the list is Nuranium an incredibly dense metal used to shield from radiation and plasma. Its density was so great, gravity-sensitive species noted how it warped space-time around it a bit like a black hole. Due to its scanner-resistant properties, Palpatine used this material in the statues of the four stages of Duarte, using it to secretly house his lightsaber inside. Unfortunately, that's all we know about Nuranium in both canon and legends, but hopefully we'll get to learn more very soon. Another lightsaber resistant material we know very little about is song steel. This luminescent silver metal was extraordinarily light and resisted lightsabers to a similar degree as Frick or the soon to be discussed Cortosis. Song steel was very rare and could be crafted into swords or staffs that were almost completely resistant to the heat of a lightsaber. The next material was predominantly used long ago during the ancient days of the Jedi Order. In fact, it was so long ago the Jedi were known as the Jedi and the lightsaber hadn't even been invented. Force-imbued metal blades were created through a complex ritual that channeled the force into the blade, realigning the metal's molecular structure into an unbreakable lattice. Similar to the lightsabers that came many thousands of years after, a crystal was placed inside the hilt. This allowed the wielder to bond with the force-imbued blade. How resistant it was to lightsabers greatly depended on the force powers of the user. Users of the dark side were able to create powerful blades that acted very similar to lightsabers, cutting through most objects and even deflecting blaster bolts. Force-imbued swords were used for thousands of years, even after the invention of the lightsaber. However, by the time of Darth Revan, almost all Force users had ditched them in the favor of lightsabers. As well as swords, Force-imbued metal was used by the Zishan Shah to create disc blades. This fearsome force act would use the force to guide these displays into their victim at great speed and with terrifying accuracy, with not even a lightsaber able to properly defend against it. Next up, we have the most famous lightsaber resistant material. Mandalorian iron, commonly known by its Mandoa name of Baskar, could only be found within the Mandalore system. The Mandalorians saw this metal as sacred and would not allow those outside of their culture to wear it. In addition to this, forging weapons such as spears with this metal was highly frowned upon, as Baskar weaponry was one of the few things that could pierce Baskar armor. However, in Legends, the Mandalorians used Baskar to make the Mandalorian Saber, known in their language as the Beskard. Heavily resembling the Dark Saber, these sabers were first used by the ancient Tang, the species that invented the Mandalorian culture. Due to its extraordinary properties, almost all of the Baskar was strip mined by the Imperials in both Legends and Canon. However, in Legends, the war with the extra galactic used on Vong exposed a gigantic vein of Baskar on Mandalore. So much, in fact, they began armoring entire ships with this extremely durable metal, allowing the Mandalorians to become a great power once again. The hide of the Zilla Beast was highly lightsaber resistant, as we saw during the Clone Wars. This armor was pretty much impervious to all forms of energy-based attacks, including blaster fire, explosions, and of course, lightsabers. Unfortunately, not much is known about the Zilla Beast or its lightsaber-resistant hide outside of the Clone Wars TV show, although it is known that Palpatine ordered for the creature to be cloned and for its armor to be studded, so possibly we'll see more of the Zilla Beast in the future. The next lightsaber-resistant material is Cortosis 
a very rare and brittle metal that works slightly differently from other metals on this list. Instead of being lightsaber resistant due to high tolerance for heat or because it's very strong, Cortosis was lightsaber resistant because it would short out the saber for several minutes due to its superconducting properties. This metal could be used to make pretty much any kind of weapon. We've seen Jedi use a Cortosis sword against Darth Vader, while we also know that Cad Bane used this metal to make bullets, although he stopped using it as it was way too expensive. And lastly, we have the most overpowered material in the whole of Star Wars, Quantum Crystalline Armor. This material was developed by Imperial scientists in the Moore installation for specific use within the Sun Crusher, arguably the most powerful superweapon in the whole of Star Wars. Quantum armor, as it was informally known, was created by producing a molecular lattice of densely packed together atoms that were then stacked on top another phase shifted layer. The result was a near indestructible and lightweight material. In fact, it was so strong, the Sun Crusher's quantum armor quite easily survived a hit from the Death Star prototype. And as I've explored before, over on my Shorts channel, the Death Star Super Laser is basically a giant lightsaber blade. Although a lightsaber has never been tested against it, the fact that this material was designed to survive supernovas suggests that this is certainly the strongest lightsaber resistant material. If you enjoyed this video, then consider checking out my video on the meanings of different lightsaber colors here. Or if you've watched that already, check out this video on all 13 force lining variants.